Hi, I'm Tom Lokes, River City's Community Access Coordinator for the City of Wisconsin Rapids. And today's show is about voter IDs. And today I have two guests in the studio, Cindy Cypress of Wood County and Paul Shabilsky. He's the new elections coordinator for the City of Wisconsin Rapids. But first I'm going to turn it over to Cindy and have her introduce herself. Hi, Tom. Hi, I'm Cindy Cypress. I'm the Wood County Clerk. Um, I've been the County Clerk um, since 2002. Before that, I was the Deputy Clerk, so I've been doing this a while. Um, but uh, here to educate people a little bit about voter photo ID because it is new in our world. This is the first election in Wood County where we have, our voters have had to show voter photo, photo ID. So that's, that's pretty much what we're going to talk about today. Alrighty, and Paul, you joined the city just a few months ago. Let's uh, tell our viewers about yourself. Uh, my name is Paul Shabilsky. I'm recently uh, been hired as the elections coordinator for the city of Wisconsin Rapids, and this is my first election, and I'm hoping for a smooth one, and hoping today we can help educate some voters on what they need to bring to the polls in regards to photo ID. Alrighty, well thank you for joining me and I hope this becomes informational for everybody that's watching here today. Uh, first election coming up here Tuesday, February 16th. It's the primary here right here in the city of Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, we have a mayoral election uh, for the primary as well as Supreme Court justice. Uh, so let's get right into the voter ID. Our first question I'm going to ask Cindy here is do people need a voter a photo ID for voting for this election in February and elections for the rest of the year. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, but to back up just a, a step also, um, not only in Wood County, because Paul addresses the city of Wisconsin Rapids issues and um, I encompass the whole county. So in addition to the, the mayor primary and the justice race, in Wood County also, there's a primary in the Nakusa School District and in the Marshfield School District. So those are some things that some other viewers than just in the city of Rapids will see on their ballot too. So wanted to, to interject that so I didn't forget that. But, but yes, this will be a change for people um, bringing um, a, a voter ID to their polling place. Um, as I said, the, this is the first time for them. So um, relatively small turnout we expect overall um, for this. So it's a good practice run for those larger elections uh, yet to come in 2016. When you're talking about an ID, it can be a driver's license, can it be something else that has a photo? I guess uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, there are very specific uh, things um, allowed in the law for um, voter photo ID, and you cannot deviate from from those those items. Um, and I, I sent you this graphic, and this is what they will have at the polling place also um, to help people uh, establish, you know, what is allowed for voter photo ID. Most people, um, and I guess uh, what. A lot of people, there is a misconception that they need to go out and obtain something um, called a voter ID. But the reality is people, most people have in their possession what they already need to pro prove who they are at the polling place. And that is either um, a Wisconsin driver's license or a Wisconsin state ID. I would imagine that, that it, the vast majority of people is what they would bring to their to their polling place. Um, the other established things that they could bring are also the Wisconsin driver's license or state ID receipt. Now remember, when you go to your DMV um, to renew your license or obtain a new license, you don't automatically get that um, in your hand anymore. It's mailed to you. So what you get instead is a receipt. It's a one-page document um, that it has a, uh, an imprint of really what your driver's license looks like and that you can use uh, as your voter photo ID. You can also use a passport book or a passport card, um, a military ID from uh, the uniformed services. Um, a tribal ID. There are 13 recognized uh, uh, 
Indian tribes, uh, Ho-Chunk Nation is one of them. So if you have a tribal ID, that's allowed. Um, a certificate of naturalization and a university or college ID. Now all of these have different parameters expiration date, what's required on them and as far as their um, date of issuance and expiration. All of them have different requirements but these are the established ones. So if you don't have a driver's license or you want to go get one, I'm just curious in town, where can they do this here in Wood County and get a license? There is a DMV service center in Wisconsin Rapids um, um, on the way to Port Edwards at that roundabout at the at the state office building there. All right. Well, Paul, this is your first election. Uh, how have, how have you uh, geared yourself for understanding all this all these laws in the last few weeks? Well, one thing I do is I listen to Cindy <laughs> and her advice. But um, well, it's since now that it's the law in Wisconsin, you know, like she was talking about, these are the forms, they're set in stone. I even, I had a gentleman this morning even kind of question this law, wondering if he could use his Veterans Affairs ID, and, and he cannot because it, he could, you can use a Uniform Services ID, but you cannot use a Veterans Affairs ID. So these, these various forms are set in stone. But yeah, like Cindy was saying, there's different parameters involved around them. Like a college ID might not be the best form to, to try and successfully use at the polls because there are some stipulations required with a college ID, such as an issuance date and a signature on the ID. So um, I think it's important for voters to you know, hopefully watch this program and hopefully uh, do some digging of their own if they're looking for some information on voter photo mm -hmm. ID so they're prepared when they go to the polls. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a, an ID no matter what. You can't vote if you don't have one, is what you're saying. Is that correct? Correct, except, <laughs> and there's a, it, you know, under the law there's always exceptions. There are a, There is a certain um, group of people, several groups of people that are exempt from voter photo ID. Those being military electors, overseas electors, and indefinitely confined electors. And the definition of an indefinitely confined elector is somebody who is, um, who is not going to the polling place due to age, illness, or infirmity. So when they um, would apply for their absentee ballot, they would check on there that they are indefinitely confined. In Wisconsin, we do not have to give a reason why we're not, uh, why we want an absentee ballot. That law changed in 2002. So we don't have to give a reason why we're not appearing at the polling place. Anybody can get an absentee ballot and you don't have to give a reason. But they can check, I'm indefinitely confined due to age, illness, or infirmity. And then they would um, be exempt from providing a copy of their photo ID with their absentee application. Um, and so the signature of the witness on their certificate envelope, on their absentee certificate envelope, serves as their uh, verifica verification of who they are. All right, so we're talking about absentee voting. Uh, by the time this show airs, I believe it will be done, absentee for the primary. Because I believe it's Friday, February 12th uh, would be the ending of the absentee. Let's, so you're saying you also need to collect IDs for the absentee, Paul, is that right, at the clerk's office? Yes, that is correct. Um, some people come into the clerk's office to apply for an absentee ballot. Um, some also get the absentee application offline and print it out and send it into the clerk's office. But in either case, if they're coming into the clerk's office or if they're sending in an application for an absentee ballot, um, accompanying, accompanying that application, we need a copy of a photo ID. So. Oftentimes people come into the office and they'll apply for an absentee ballot and we'll take a quick copy of their ID. Otherwise, if they send in a application by mail that does not have an ID, they will be receiving a letter in the mail shortly after that, which is a form letter that explains to them that they need to send in a copy of some form of photo identification. 
No, oh, go ahead. Uh, and an interesting thing about that is once um, an absentee voter has provided that voter photo ID with their absentee application, they don't need to continue that again. Um, they don't need to provide that ever again unless they um, need to update their um, voter registration due to a name change or an address change. So as an example, um, I would send in an absentee application and I would send a photocopy of my driver's license with my application for an absentee ballot. Say the expiration date on my driver's license is next year. I could continue to receive absentee ballots for the next 10 years, even though my driver's license is now expired. As long as I haven't changed my voter registration status, he doesn't have to do any mo anything else and I don't have to do anything else. Do you see, I'm just curious, an increase in absentee voting uh, over the years, Cindy? It's, uh, it's, really, uh, it's really been promoted by the political parties. Um, I think the reasoning behind it is, um, you know, they, they want to get those votes in the box. You know, even though people call it early voting, Wisconsin doesn't have early voting. They have in-person absentee voting. Those ballots aren't tabulated until election day. We don't have ab early voting. We have in-person absentee. Um, but pushing people to get an absentee ballot so that they get it done early and so that um, to alleviate lines maybe at the polling place or just to make sure that it's accomplished and you don't get busy on election day and forget about it or, or suddenly something else comes up where you can't get to the polls. So th there's definitely been an increase in absentee voting. Well, Paul, let's talk about the polls. They're going to open for the primary on Tuesday, this Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the times, uh, the places in the city, and then, Cindy, you can also talk about people that might work in the county or live in the county um, and where they need to go or a certain website that they can get uh, assistance with. So, Paul, tell us a little bit about for this primary and then also just also talk about the April 5th because uh, we may run this program after uh, just because you're going to need voter ID as well uh, throughout the year. Uh, they may have missed this and uh, well, let's, let's share uh, that information. Okay, well, the polling locations for both the February 16th election and the April 5th election will be the same. Um, for wards one through five in Wisconsin Rapids, they will be going to cast their ballots at Mead School, and that's basically all of the west side of town. Um, for wards six through 15, 24, and 26 through 29, they will be going to Howe School to cast their ballots and then wards 16 through 23 and 25 will be going to Grove School. And if a voter is unsure about the ward that they are in, they can always contact the clerk's office, give the clerk's office a call, and we will certainly let them know which ward they, were, they are in so they know which voting place to go to. Another great resource for anybody to um, look up their Oh, where do I where do I vote? Their polling place. Um, who are my elected officials? Um, how do I obtain an absentee ballot? What's my that they can see their voting history, the history of, of the elections that they've participated in. Um, a, a website uh, created by the Government Accountability Board called My Vote, myvote.wi.gov. This is the best thing that's ever happened so to very, a voter. Very easy to use website. Wonderful. I can put in my um, my name, my date of birth, and I can uh, find out things about my uh, election past. Um, I can put in an address, find out uh, where my polling place is. Um, I can see what's on the ballot. What am I going to be voting for in April? What's going to be on that ballot? Um, I can fill out an absentee ballot re request and get that, print that, get that to my municipal clerk. Um, fabulous, myvote.wi.gov. 
So you could see the ballot before you get to the you can, poll. You can see, it isn't a yeah. true ballot, but you can see what races will be on that ballot, what candidates will be on that ballot. Directions to your polling place. Um, you can fill out an, a voter registration form, uh, print that, and bring that to your polling place with you uh, so that you're uh, prepared for voter registration at, at your polling place. It's wonderful. Right. You know, how many times you go and who is that? Who is, I mean, is there s smaller elections that mm -hmm. maybe not right. even aware of? Uh, when you get there. So it's a good place to go to this uh, website, you say, is at myvote.wi.gov. Mm -hmm. And you're right in there. So, mm -hmm. all right. Um, let's talk a little bit about when you arrive at the polling place. If someone hasn't ever gone or hasn't gone in a while, um, there's a difference between registration, I think, and voter ID. Is that correct? Oh, very correct. And um, I think that the, the thing that's confusing to people you know we're every every arena has their own jargon and and we bandy it about so so easily um, but there needs to be a true separation in people's minds that the first thing that they need in order to vote is to be registered and in order to register to vote they need to prove where they reside they need proof of residency. They would go to, if they have never voted before, um, they would find out what municipality they live in, or in the case of the city, what ward do I live in, so what polling place do I appear at? But in the rest of the um, county, um, you know, they, they may live in a town or a village and they need to find out where the polling place is, and it's easy enough uh, on the My Vote website or please call my office, the county clerk's office, we're happy to help. Um, and they would need to bring proof of residency, um, a um, driver's license, if that has their name, you know, obviously it has their name on it, but their current address, a utility bill, a bank statement, a paycheck stub, um, a tax bill, a lease, uh, a, a, a letter from a governmental agency. There's, there's quite a, a list of things that will suffice as proof of residency. Um, and they would fill out a form, show their proof of residency, and they're registered to vote. And then they would be um, offered a, a ballot. Um, when, they, when they get to that point in time, um, there's uh, poll workers that um, they would approach. Um, they, it's required that they state their name and their address out loud. And this is always a, a funny thing that I get in classes and, and questions, well, we know everybody in our, in our small municipality. Do they really have to state their name and their address? Yes, yes, you have to state your name and your address out loud. And that, the reasoning behind that is so that anybody in that polling place has the right to challenge your right to vote if they would ever know that Paul's a felon or whatever. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and then the uh, voter number is issued uh, because the number of ballots that are issued has to equal the number of, of people that are checked in on the poll list. You would move over to a private voting booth, uh, mark your choices, and it, you take then your ballot to the optical scan reader, insert it into the optical scan machine, and you are complete. Oh, but I'm sorry, I missed a step. You mm -hmm. are then required to sign your name on the poll list. This is a new requirement in the last about two years. The law changed that you each voter needs to sign the poll list now, um, unless you are disabled and cannot. Um, and now the new component, of course, at this election is the uh, poll workers will look at the voter photo ID that you are presenting one of these forms, and they're looking to see, does the photo reasonably resemble me? Now, that's a pretty broad, you know, thing because um, I'm, I forget how long uh, driver's licenses are issued now. Is it 10 years? It's, it's over 12 five years. years it's it's for quite, sure. a, quite yeah. some time. So it's like I could change a, a, quite a bit in that mm -hmm. time. But does it reasonably look like me? Does the, the name reasonably conform to, to my name on the poll list. Cindy, Cynthia, Sue, Susan, Robert, Bob, you know, Smith Jones, 
Smith, does it reasonably conform to what's on, on this document? So they're making that comparison also and looking at the expiration date. Then you'd be issued your ballot, go vote it, and then put it in the thing. And, and what I always counsel um, my, the municipal clerks and the chief election inspectors is to look at their polling place and be aware of those first time voters going, to look at their polling place and make sure that it's clear where people go, that they have enough signage so that people aren't confused by which step, which table they go to for thus and such. Stop here first, arrows directing them to where they need to go so that it's easy and smooth. Well, I know, Paul, you're going to be doing a lot of that. Cindy, you're right. probably going to be back at the at your office during that time. I don't know if you go out and do that. I know Paul does, or at least yeah. Shane Blazer did right. when he was a, a clerk uh, for mm -hmm. the city. Uh, did you have to add more poll workers now because of this new voter ID? Is there, is there an additional person there? Or I'm just curious, uh, you know, you have to train all those people. Right, and I've been training poll workers the last three days. Well, they've actually been certainly I would say they've been training me a little bit as well because they know a lot. Um, but many of them have been doing this for years. But um, we actually have decided that at the time which the voter signs the poll book, they will show their ID because then we will have a baseline where they can check their ID against their name just so it conforms. And so, yeah, in our training, we have not had to add any, any people this year. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just more of a training issue, making sure they know how to properly check the IDs. And one of the things that Cindy covered was using a broad lens when looking mm -hmm. at the picture because people change. And the only time it, uh, it would really be challenged is if you, you know. It was blatant. It was very, very blatant, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and this is actually a nice election to um, establish those processes right. is how did this flow, um, how did it happen? Did it, did it work this way? Do we need to change things up or, or do they? I don't really administer any polling places. My job is totally different than, than those municipal clerk's jobs. Um, but, but we all work together, but this is a, a great, um, resource to have this small elect, small turnout election to see what kind of things do we need to put in place? Did it work great or what do we need to do to switch it up for April, which will be a much larger turnout? So what kind of turnout are you thinking is going to happen? 10, 15 percent kind of guessing on this um, one? It was, uh, you know, looking at, and, and it will be pockets also. I look at the county as a whole in my statistics, um, so that of, that of course changes the the city will you know have a different pocket that'll skew right. skew everything else. But like I said, the Nakusa school district and the Marshfield school district you know skew things. But um, you know I'm I'm going I'm going 15 between 15 and 20 would be quite high. Yeah, I think it would have been very small oh, yeah. without a mayoral primary in the city of Wisconsin Rapids, but since we have three candidates running for mayor, we have to have a primary, and hopefully more people are getting a little bit more excited to turn out to the polls now that there's that primary on for the city of mm -hmm. Wisconsin Rapids, but mm -hmm. if there wasn't that, I think it'd be a very, very small turnout for just one contest, which is the Wisconsin State Supreme Court Justice. Mm -hmm. Well, let's wrap it up a little bit with uh, people want to know the results. They're interested. It's 9 o'clock. The polls are closed, 9.30. They don't want to wait till tomorrow morning and listen to it on either TV or the radio or wherever media they get it. Are the ballots now, tell me how they're, where they're counted. I know, Cindy, you do some. Do you do some? And then kind of say how maybe people can find the results throughout the night if they're interested. And I'll start with you, Paul. Okay. Well, I believe that the results are publicly announced at the polling place. They, they, when, yes, when the, when the optical scan machine uh, is tabulated, yes, the chief election inspector um, would publicly announce the results uh, from the tape. Uh, that's an open process. When polls close at 8 o'clock, there's a lot of paperwork and end-of-the-night um, processes that need to be done. 
um, but and it's, it's open to the public or at that point to the candidates or the candidates representatives um, can watch that process and yes the, the chief election inspector then would announce the results from from that tape and then, and, and then we end up uh, in the city we end up reporting our results to Cindy at the county and then uh, I believe it wouldn't a good place to go would be Wood County's website. Yes, it would. Yes. It would. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we come. Part my job is to compile results from uh, all 34 municipalities, and I post them on the county website. It's co.wood.wi.us, um, and you can sort those results in whatever way interests you. Um, our IT department did a fabulous job in developing the elections results web website. I get compliments from other other counties who look at it and go, "Wow, that's great!" Um, and from the media who uses it, I, I direct um, you know all of the media outlets to that website um, on, on election night. So if you're only interested in the mayor's race, you can look just at the city of Wisconsin Rapids results. You don't have to filter through, you know, look everything. Uh, if you're only interested in the town of Siegel, you can look at those results, um, or if you look at, it's, you can look at, at all of them. Um, but remember, when you're looking at those results also, um, also on that website, the municipal clerks by law are required to post on a website on election night the number of outstanding absentee ballots and then outs the number of outstanding provisional ballots. I take care of that for them by posting it on, on my website. So um, as you may imagine, if there's a close race, and that number of outstanding absentee and provisional ballots is a significant number, hmm, that may you know, lead you to believe that that right. could skew the results, depending on how many of those come back. Okay, uh, because a lot of times, like the news will say precincts reporting 25%, 30%, it gets a little confusing to the average person watching and understanding that, so. Well, I appreciate all that information. I think it's going to be very informative uh, for our, our, our viewers to pick up on on the voter ID and a photo law that's new this year uh, for our new election uh, that's going to take place on February 16th. Is there anything else that you guys want to talk about that I missed that people should know about for this election, especially on the voter IDs? That's our main topic. Mm -hmm. um, just be prepared. Um, so many times for elections, and I'm guilty of it also, we wait till the last minute. Um, it's a, No matter what it is, all of us are busy, our lives are busy, um, but this is something that you need to take care of. If you plan on voting, you need to take care of, of determining now what you're going to bring. And if you don't have one of these items, um, you need to look at securing one of these forms of, of voter photo ID. Um, because not having it on election day um, isn't, th there are provisions, and I don't know if we wanna get into vo exactly what provisional voting is. We can if you want to, um, but be prepared, mm -hmm. be prepared. Well, we'll leave it as that. Just be prepared with what we had uh, talked about earlier. I think that's a good guideline. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, anything else that you want to mention? Um, I would just I would just urge anybody who wants to go out and vote if they're not sure if they are registered. And uh, you can register on election day at the polling place. Mm -hmm. But if they want to make sure that they're registered so they can save some save themselves some mm -hmm. time at the at the polling place, they should check that myvote.wi.gov website it's a tremendous resource it'll tell you where you're going to vote and what your juris your voting jurisdiction is and and it'll tell you if you're actively registered or if you registered to the correct address or not so it's mm -hmm. a great resource and I, I hope the voters or prospective mm -hmm. voters will use it and there's a lot of videos I believe on that site too is there videos and things that they can see as well right on the on the government accountability yeah. board website uh, they have a, a voter ID campaign called Bring It to the Ballot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, lots of nice uh, video clips giving very succinct information on voter photo ID. 
Alrighty. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me here today and telling our audience about this. Mm -hmm. uh, very beneficial on uh, voter ID. So mm -hmm. thanks again for coming. Happy to be here. Thank you, Tom. Alrighty. I want to thank you for watching River City's Community Access Media on this new program called Voter ID. Uh, just be prepared when you go out to the polls this year, uh, again on February 16th, which is the primary, and then again on April 5th, and uh, you'll get to know more uh, when you do get to the polls. If you have questions, you can always call the clerk's office now at the county, at Cindy Seepers, or Paul Shabilsky over at uh, Wisconsin Rapids uh, City Hall, and they'll be glad to help you out if you have more questions. Again, thanks for watching River City's Community Access Media.